Hi, my name is Anne Russell. I'm the birth mother of two children with FASD and the founder of the Russell Family Fetal Alcohol Disorders Association. I've been researching FASD since 2000, um, probably less researching and more trying to find out how to survive um, with a, um, uh, an adult son in, uh, uh, with the condition. But um, what I would like to do with the, this, these videos is to have available short, sharp presentations, no more than five minutes, of specific information relating to various aspects of FASD so that people can go straight to the information and find out what they want to know quite quickly. This, um, this is the seventh in a series of 11 presentations on the condition, on various aspects of the condition. And um, this presentation is on the history of my eldest son, Mick. Now his, his history um, and, and my other son, Seth's history, hopefully will round out the condition like, um, like the, you know, the, the clinical terms and the um, characteristics and the um, symptoms don't. Um, so I'll just go through his history in the hope that it will connect with somebody and that you will have an understanding as to why your child is behaving the way he or she is. Um, Mick was born in 1981. Um, when I first found out I was pregnant, I told the doctor that I had um, gone to a party and uh, consumed an awful lot of alcohol a couple of days prior. He said, don't worry, there's no problem. Um, not to worry, so I didn't. And then at the end of my pregnancy, when I was about eight and a half or so months pregnant, um, I had an amniocentesis and the doctor prescribed, well actually he said, now go and uh, go to the pub with your husband and have a few drinks. Um, and I did, naturally. I'm a recovering alcoholic and when someone tells you to do that, of course, then you go and do it. Uh, the, the thing was, that was a prescription, I don't know if you know what a tocolytic is, um, but it's uh, a substance or a medication that um, holds off labour. Um, so, and that was prescribed, well it's uh, uh, up in the 50s or 60s I think it was prescribed, um, or alcohol was prescribed as a, a tocolytic. And uh, often women would have alcohol drips to slow down labour. So I, uh, I didn't know that at the time, obviously, but uh, from my research that's what I found. Anyway, Mick was born um, probably, I don't know, seven, eight days later, and he was six pounds. Um, he cried a lot. Uh, he was uh, must have cried for the first two or three, even four months that I remember, almost non-stop. I remember being so sleep deprived that I was barely functioning. Um, certainly not on a conscious level. I'm sure that, that do, while I was doing a lot of things, I was unconscious. Um, anyway, uh, he got every cold and flu that was going around, every um, upper respiratory tract infection, anything that was going around, it seemed his immune system couldn't cope with it. Uh, he was in hospital for vomiting and diarrhoea. Uh, he was um, often in quite a bad way. At six months old, he was said uh, at a routine um, consultation with a paediatrician, uh, he said he was retarded or could be retarded and we wouldn't know, his words I might add, and we wouldn't know until he was six months old, uh, 12 months old. So for the next six months I tried everything I could to stimulate him to, to increase his muscle tone and to do whatever I could uh, to help him through those next six months. I um, we didn't have the internet, and I lived out in the bush. I didn't, you know, didn't have anyone to, much to talk to, and uh, certainly didn't have any books on the subject. So what I did was I rolled a um, a, a pillow up into a, a cylinder and just rolled him on his tummy backwards and forwards. He kind of liked it, and and you know we had made it into a bit of fun and. Um, 
whatever uh, whatever happened, I mean, I don't know whether that was the, the reason or whether he was always going to be okay, but thankfully at 12 months old, the paediatrician said that he was okay. Oh, we didn't have any more. I put him onto soy milk. Um, he uh, had he didn't thrive. There were weeks when he didn't put on weight, um, weeks when he lost weight. He had a very poor sucking reflex. He had uh, uh, um, delayed um, milestones. He didn't walk until he was 18 months. Um, I don't remember exactly the other milestones, but I know he was way behind. He um, gradually caught up though. Um, once he turned two, uh, and by the time he went to school, he was re physically uh, 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 quite a normal little kid. Um, he had no real problems, physical problems then until he was about seven or eight. And then he started saying things to me like, Mummy, I don't feel like I'm here. And that sort of developed into, you know, uh, migraines and then that developed into that feeling of, of absence to migraines, to vomiting. And around about nine years of age, we took him to the doctor who referred him for an EEG. Now, the EEG found that he had temporal lobe epilepsy, but, um, but, but no medication was prescribed at the time. So... Um, from then until he was about 20, I think, um, we didn't have too much trouble. He would get, you know, headaches, and he'd get, uh, and he'd sit under a cold shower or a hot shower or whatever would um, help him. But then it started gradually to get worse. And by the time he was about 25, uh, they were really the, the headaches and the vomiting and the absences were very debilitating. So he was put on to Tegretol, and um, that worked very well um, and now at 30 he doesn't take any medication at all. Uh, he at nine at 10 years of age he uh, went to, to a regular um, appointment with the dentist and the dentist found that he had a tumour in his jaw the size of a golf ball. Well that um, that was uh, removed um, in hospital and the tumour was actually the size of a tennis ball in a little 10 year old boy's jaw, it was enormous. Um, seizures and um, epilepsy and uh, jaw um, problems are all indicative of prenatal alcohol exposure, but we didn't know that at the time. From someone who had um, many of the symptoms of FASD when he was little, um, to now, uh, where he can live a normal life. Um, it's just been an amazing journey. He doesn't have any trouble managing money. He, um, he can hold down relationships, hold down a job. He's bought a house. He has a lovely girlfriend. Um, it's just amazing how things turn out because I would have thought that he would have had the problems and my young son Seth would have had no problems because he didn't have any when he was little. Anyway, that's the story of Mick. Um, obviously there's an awful lot more in between those years that uh, occurred. Uh, but uh, if you'd like to find out more, uh, or if you've connected with the story in any way, please email, email me at elizabeth at rffada.org, F for Fred. Or have a look at our website uh, or our Facebook page. Uh, and if you'd like to know more about the training that we developed and is now delivered by um, Training Connections Australia, a registered training organisation, um, please uh, email me and uh, I'll give you additional information. Um, it's a great program and uh, it's been very well received and it was the first publicly available training in Australia. Thank you.